Have you ever wondered just how immersive a game like Skyrim is in VR? Does the headset make you feel like you are right there inside the game, or is it essentially just Skyrim but you have weird hands? Well today I'm going to do something that I've been wanting to try out ever since I first got my Index headset earlier this year. I'm going to experience vanilla Skyrim in VR as Bethesda released it and then completely overhaul it with mods and see how it compares. I've not touched Skyrim in VR before this, so all of this will be new to me and I am excited to see the overhauls and hard work the modding community have put into this game over the years. Here's the deal. I'm going to play Skyrim up until just after the point of killing the first dragon, stop, install the mods, and then go for it again and compare. I'll be judging based on the following aspects. Look, performance, immersion, fun. Some people may say, just after killing the first dragon, that's like an hour of content. You need to experience at least the main storyline before determining the difference. But to those people I say, you are right. But I get distracted very easily and I'll lose sight of the goal as I spend 20 hours trying to hold hands with an NPC. So I'm trying to take a small little comparable chunk and see how we go. First things first, I'm going to this with a bit of a tainted understanding of the quality of vanilla Skyrim in VR. Every time I hear someone talking about Skyrim in VR, they quickly add in how of course they are playing with mods because Skyrim VR was absolutely terrible and just an all round mess. So I'm stepping into this with the worry that as soon as I put on that headset, my character is going to Beyblade into the floor and I'll be left puking my guts up on my computer room carpet. So here we go. Skyrim vanilla time. Look. Overall, I think it looks... fine? At this point, Skyrim is in an 11 year old game. It looks dated, but the world definitely feels like it fits with VR. In a weird, muddy way, it actually still looks pretty. I found myself looking up at the sky or the running water and just admiring how good it looks. Sure, the butterflies look like flying pieces of poo with cardboard stuck on them, but if you squint, they're majestic. One of the coolest things was being able to lean in towards high detail items and really get a sense of scale that isn't there in the flat version of Skyrim. Of course, this also loops back to the low detail items, which just look a billion times more muddy, but once again, just squint and it's fine. Performance. I was actually pretty surprised at how well the vanilla version ran. I couldn't really find any chugging spots with my setup but I had heard about a bug that causes your character to start spiraling into oblivion <laughs> and then really kicks the motion sickness up. I didn't get to experience this in the section of the game I played, so I'm pretty glad as I suffer motion sickness pretty easily. It honestly played fine, albeit a bit clunky at times, but that was pretty much from a control and menu standpoint. Immersion. I felt immersed to an extent. Walking around felt okay. Being able to turn around 360 degrees and get a full view of the rolling landscape felt awesome. Where it falls apart though is the limitations on what you can do with your hands. Things that look like they should move from touch don't. Hands go through NPCs. Your character feels almost like a headless ghost zooming about on a motorized skateboard with two swords and a dream. Getting into fights was hilarious because you could essentially just become a whirling blender and annihilate everything. The only limit was how fast you could swing your controllers. It was a little bit sad because with the added VR layers of hands, the urge to be obnoxious to all the citizens of Skyrim was definitely there, but due to the limitations of interaction I was confined in my dickheadery. Keep your hands to yourself. Fun. Skyrim VR in its vanilla form felt fine. Where are you going? I was enjoying my time zooming about. Just absolutely blending anything that got in my path. Archery also weirdly was a heap of fun, though a little overpowered. You could fire shots at an obscene <laughs> rate. Like a I could definitely gun. see myself going the usual route of sneak Never plus archery and having a great time, turning enemies into pin cushions before they even knew what was going on. The biggest detractor of fun I found was a motion sickness limiter that kept popping up around the outside of the screen whenever I turned. It felt like my character was falling asleep every time I had to make a slight turn and at some points added to my motion sickness. I believe this is a field of view reduction that is on by default and admittedly I could have turned it off but I didn't for some reason. Maybe I thought it was good for me to leave it on but I'm pretty sure I just got distracted with all the sword waving and forgot to turn it off. 
Overall, the experience was okay. I was ready for the worst, and I found myself actually having a fun time, awkwardly stumbling from one fight to another. I left feeling excited and ready for the modded experience. What I was not ready for was the sheer amount of effort Skyrim modding takes. I've dipped my toe in the past on stream, adding ridiculous mods to fight Thomas the Tank Engine as a dragon, have Sonic the Hedgehog as a follower, or even yell Bazinga at people. But stepping into getting mods to experience Skyrim VR in its most peak state was a whole level of insanity that I was not ready for. I found myself getting lost in top 5 must have Skyrim VR mods videos, random clickbait websites, and insanely long guides posted in Steam on what people were recommending. To be honest, it is a bit overwhelming. There is just so much information and so many mods that have come out over the years. I narrowed my sights down to one guide listed on Steam, which sounded like it was extremely curated, up to date, though included some adult stuff. Actually, lots of adult stuff. <laughs> but as I was searching for ways to actually install the mods, I stumbled across a mod installer called Wabajack, as well as a curated mod pack called Foos. This was an absolute godsend. What took almost a week of overwhelming searching was now crammed down into a list of 280-ish mods, all with quick access automatic download links through Nexus mods. I might step through that in a different video, but I definitely recommend going down this path if you're looking into modding Skyrim VR for the first time. After downloading every single one of those mods, I immediately jumped in to Skyrim VR and I was so excited to see what was going on. Immediately, the difference was noticeable, namely because you don't start off in the usual horse-drawn cart getting taken to your execution. Instead, you start in the realm of... Welcome to Foos. You're in the realm of Lokan. Which is sort of a magical plane with random NPCs, floating islands, and warp stones oh. to different locations scattered around Skyrim. Out of the box, the modded Foos experience requires some setup. For instance, you need to custom set your body height and arm length, or else you'll float above your character. Your arms extend upwards and you run around like a fantastic gibbon. If that sounds good to you, then I guess leave that setting alone. However, after everything is set up, the immersion factor goes all the way up, as suddenly you have arms and shoulders, and in my case, half-orc junk. Although this was a slightly different start, it definitely felt better than the vanilla intro, at least from a motion sickness perspective. I was able to get a handle of the controls, bug a few NPCs, it was fantastic. I quickly learned that NPCs do not want to hold hands with people they don't know, but I had to keep trying. Anyway, I grabbed some basic equipment, quickly warped to Whiterun, and started on the journey back to the introduction dungeon exit for a true comparison. Here we go. Look, as soon as I loaded into the area outside of Whiterun, I noticed how vibrant the game looked. It was so pretty. <laughs> the sky, the mountainous horizon, the giant goober of a giant that kept trying to smush me, it was all so beautiful. I'll be completely honest with you and say I didn't instantly notice how pretty everything was in comparison though, because it had taken me a solid week to get around to getting the mods working, but I definitely noticed a few things here and there. And while looking at it now, while I'm editing this, it's so obvious how much better the mods make the game look. Skyrim Vanilla looks fine, but it's a bit muddy and drab. Whereas with the mods, everything pops and looks nice. It's so, so pretty. Performance. I was playing on the full Foos Rodar profile, which had all the essential mods and a bunch of added special stuff, and I didn't notice any performance hiccups. I was zooming along, completely with locomotion on, and no sign of those pesky blinders, which was great. Motion sickness was still a factor, but weirdly, not as much as it was in vanilla. The NPCs looked smoother, Fighting felt more responsive, even with all the mods, loading times felt about the same as well. Immersion. Immersion skyrocketed with the mods. Being able to reach out and physically interact with the objects and NPCs adds a really weird and cool layer to the game. Whether it's picking up a chicken 
or hitting an NPC with a cabbage, there is some extra cool layer to the world when you can actually interact with it. You feel like you are actually taking part in the world rather than just floating through it from quest marker to quest marker. I will mention that the improvements to the menu system and control bindings, while great, do require some research prior to jumping in. There are a few things that take the vanilla setup and completely turn it on its head. For example, holding down grip with the right controller, I was able to access my favorited right hand weapons without needing to pause the game with a menu pop-up. I'm not sure whether this was covered by an in-game tooltip from the mod, but I could have blown straight past it while trying to grab the Khajiit's tail in the intro. I wish I had the foresight and initiative to read the comprehensive mod overview documentation that Foos provides, because once I understood the changes to the controls and menu system, as well as some of the new abilities, I felt like my character was becoming more of an extension of myself. And I could have reached that point sooner, rather than awkwardly trying a bunch of gesture combinations to get my bow and arrow working. Another big bump for immersion was how dark everything gets at night, or in dungeons. For the first time in all my time in Skyrim, in all, all of my previous playthroughs, I used a torch to be able to see, and it was awesome. Holding a torch in my off hand to light the way and have a sword at the ready in the other hand felt like being a true adventurer. It adds also a really creepy atmosphere to the dungeons, and despite having done Blood Gulch or whatever it's called <laughs> a number of times already, I genuinely felt a little creeped out holding that torch out. Also, also, there was a moment when I was standing outside Whiterun at nighttime, looking at the sky, and I noticed the lights up on the mountains where the greybeards are. It, it was a small touch, but the feeling of scale in that moment was incredible. It's hard to describe. Fun. Modern Skyrim in VR is a lot of fun. Whether it's having the ability to just be an absolute jerk to everyone around you with your Hulk strength, or the ability to throw your weapons, have them hone at an enemy, and then return to you like your Thor. It's all so much damn fun. Everything felt like it had the right amount of tweaking about it to make the gameplay experience be more interesting. Though there are a couple of things I should mention. Out of the gate, the mods include a difficulty rejig that is honestly quite challenging. While I died a total of zero times getting up to the dragon fight in vanilla, I think I died 12 times with the modded version? The enemies hit harder on normal difficulty. The encounters have also been reworked, so there are more enemies, and it felt like spinning around like a neutral bullet did less damage. I eventually lowered the difficulty because I ended up doubling the total amount of time I spent in modded versus vanilla. Even with the difficulty change though, it was a heap of fun. Definitely recommend the fire spell, so freaking cool. The other thing I'll mention is that you can no longer be a machine gun with arrows. The mod requires you to reach over your shoulder to be able to grab a new arrow and line up a shot. The immersive factor of this is really, really cool, but there was something so dumb and great about just being able to spam 500 iron arrows at a level one bandit before they knew what was going on. Overall, Skyrim VR modded is in a whole new game but it feels like a far better one. For my short time with both, I would definitely keep playing the modded, of course. But I was actually quite surprised by how okay the vanilla version of Skyrim VR was. It wasn't amazing, but it seemed fine. I will probably keep playing Skyrim VR in the future because experiencing that world with a headset on just felt like the next step towards the RPG of the future that I cannot wait to play. Hey, you're the best, all right? I want you to know that all of this will one day be yours. Give me a little hug. I'm sorry I'm inside you right now. There you go. And...